In this video, we're going to take a detailed look at the built-in audio filters of iShowU Instant. These filters affect just the microphone input of iShowU, and they have no impact on the application audio. The audio filters can be found in Advanced Mode. They're on the Audio tab. They're a part of the Advanced Features in-app purchase. Now, I should prefix this and say I'm not an audio expert. What we're going to try and do here is explain the filters from a user's point of view with as little technical jargon as possible. And I'll try and give some possible uses as I talk through each of the filters. So let's start with some setup. Uh, before we begin, we need to set up the mic so that it's possible for you to hear the effect of your changes. The best way to do this is play back the mic to a headset. And this way you're not going to get feedback. You can hear what... Uh, what effect the changes you're making are having. In my case, I've got a condenser mic, which is very sensitive. So I'm going to select this as the input. Then I'll open up, I show you instant preferences, and make sure that I'm previewing my mic to my headset so I can hear the changes I'm making. All right, that done. Okay, now I can safely enable monitor input device within I show you, knowing that I'm not about to get a massive loud feedback in my speakers. Okay, right, let's look at the first audio filter. And this one is the Dynamics Processor. It's useful for flattening peaks and acting as a gate. Um, right, let's look at the peaks and loudness first. If you find that your mic input is sounding clipped or distorted when you speak loudly, uh, you could reduce its input volume in the first instance, uh, which is actually the right thing to do. Uh, or if that doesn't work, use this Dynamics Processor to compress it. So let's have a look at what this compression is with an example. You can see that if I move the top control point upwards, that whatever input level comes in on the mic also goes to the output they're matched. Basically no processing is done. The input is shown uh, as the diagonal line in the main area and the output level is the blue bar that we see on the right. And as I can talk you can see they're pretty much they're both the same. Now if I lower that top control point a portion of the audio is compressed. Notice how the output is now lower than the input and this is proportional to the slope of the curve. And so you'll have to play with this. Um, you know, it's all going to be different for everyone. But this is nice because it means the reduction that you get on the output isn't a hard cut. It's nice and gradual. Right, so let's look at this lower control point. And you can use this as a gate. A gate is an audio filter that removes audio completely until the input level gets past a certain point. So you can see that audio is generally bouncing around negative 60 dB. If I want to not have any of that ambient noise on the output while I'm not speaking, then I could move that lower control point upwards. And you can see how it begins to go red, but and suddenly there's no longer anything on the output. The output is completely silent. So uh, you've got to keep in mind, though, that it's limited in its usefulness. It doesn't filter it out as you're recording. It's just while you're not speaking and while the audio is at this certain ambient noisy point, now we've got nothing on the output, but as soon as you um, go over that, you know, you'll get everything that comes from your mic, including any noise. Right, so go ahead and expand the details view. This is really useful if you've got a quiet mic. Um, one of my headsets is, is really like this. It's, for whatever reason, it's just really, really quiet. Um, so I often will increase the master gain here so that I get something reasonable on the output. Um, don't go too high, though. Otherwise, you'll get uh, some pretty awful distortion. All right, so let's close that off. Let's take a look at the compressor. Uh, the second unit is a multi-band compressor. Um, it's useful for changing the feel of your mic audio without killing its feel completely, which is quite possible with that Dynamics processor that we saw previously because it's, it's one band. It's a processor that works over the whole thing. Um, this multi-band band compressor, you can change just one portion of the audio. Now compression itself is a complex topic and we're only going to cover the very basics with a little demo. Um, I recommend that you search for audio compressor tutorial 
online and you'll get a wealth of how to's and articles that'll really uh, help your understanding but you know certainly play around here and and see what you can get as well so a multi-band compressor lets you apply compression to a given band of audio without affecting other bands so it basically splits it up as an example i'm going to modify band 2 which i've set to around about 150 to 900 hertz and this will change the way my voice sounds it's just an example not necessarily a good one um, you'll need to play with your own mic to hear the changes yourself and what you're looking for though is to remove any sounds or tones that you don't like uh, experiment with the four bands to see if compressing your voice makes it sound more favorable to you uh, don't go crazy with it because it can easily make things much worse Compressing anything too much is going to make it generally sound more dull and lifeless, uh, so you don't want to do that. Alright, let's move on to the EQ. Uh, the EQ splits up the signal into a number of frequencies or bands, and it lets you boost or cut each of those independently. It's not like a compressor though. Uh, the change you make is constant, and it's not dependent on the input level at all. So, but it's really good for quickly enhancing your mic audio. You can take a cheaper USB headset and make it sound better by subtly increasing the gains of certain bands while reducing the gains on undesirable bands. Okay, again, as with the compressor, you need to be adjusting and playing with the EQ using your own mic because your voice is going to be unique, uh, as is the hardware that you're using and the room that you're recording in. So here are some guidelines um, that are more or less nicked from some EQ articles that I found on the web. So straight away, drop everything below 60 hertz. Normally, you're not going to get anything from your mic that's particularly useful down there. And number two, you can reduce harshness by applying reductions between 2.5 and 4K. So that's these bands here. Uh, it's going to be pretty hard to hear any of this as I'm doing it so you know you're going to have to play with us and, and preview it yourself um, number three smoothness so at 1 to 2k uh, make an adjustment this again is a reduction and you're just looking to take out anything negative that you can hear if if you make a small reduction it sounds better that's a good thing but if you think it sounds worse uh, you know don't do it uh, finally number four um, you can give your voice more depth by a, by putting in some boosts from 200 to 600 hertz that's up this range here and just make small adjustments and verify that what you hear is more pleasing it's always what you're going for something that sounds better don't go too far or it'll sound sort of boomy and unbalanced so to really hear the difference exit the graphic eq and then turn it on and off while speaking you should be able to hear a really obvious difference as the eq is enabled and disabled so I hope that's given you some kind of idea or some introduction to the filters. Um, as I said before, really recommend that you go and look online uh, for specifics on each of the filters if you want to start getting into this in detail. But it should be enough to get you going. Enjoy.